What's up? My name is Technobi here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. In this quick guide, I'll be taking you through optimizing Fortnite Chapter 4. It's a brand new release and it's been a while since I've done one of these videos, so it's about time for an update. Not too much has changed, but if you're just hopping in now, you'll get a great boost in FPS after watching this video. If you'd like even more, in the description down below, you'll find a Windows 10, 11 and NVIDIA optimization guides to get the most out of your PC. That being said, I'm barely going to touch on Windows optimization. Obviously Obviously, just make sure you have as many things closed as possible, only have what you need running, disable unnecessary overlays like FPS counters and Discord overlay especially if you don't use it, as well as all of those useful tips and tricks. But regardless, I'll be focusing mainly on the game itself, which is what I'll hop into now. Right, so first of all, let's talk about new settings. I'll head across to settings using the hamburger in the top left, then the settings icon here. Finally, settings, and inside of here under the game UI or interface section, we'll be talking about the new options. These two up here are actually old options, they've just now been moved to the game UI settings. Reticle you'll obviously want to have on, that's the marker in the center of your screen. Reticle ammo indicator is really useful to have, it'll show you your ammo count just under your crosshair, instead of you having to look in the bottom right of your screen. These are all old settings here, but the new ones, damage numbers. Previously, you'd have numbers add up on top of each other and to the side. Now, the list option here adds them up directly vertically and you can set it to cumulative instead, which will just add them up. Hit someone for 10, then another 10, you'll see 20, 30, 40, 50, etc. Instead of them just sitting next to each other and you having to do math manually. Reticle damage feedback is a little hit marker that appears when you actually hit someone. Previously, it was a small red like X that appeared over your crosshair. Now it'll appear as an icon around your crosshair for a shield and it'll change depending on what kind of hit it is. If you set it to hidden icons, you're just adding an icon next to the damage numbers. It's not really necessary and it may be a little bit annoying. You'll probably want hit only here. Finally, target type indicator. If you aim over an enemy, your crosshair should change colors to red or at least something similar depending on what you're aiming at, which may help you play if you happen to miss someone and mass over them, etc. It's a cool little feature to have and usually you'll want to have this on. By default, these are the new settings up here. And of course, these are what I'd recommend. With that out of the way, let's get into the actual optimization itself. So starting at the very top, windowed mode should definitely be full screen. Resolution should match your monitor or at least be compatible. Otherwise too high, you'll be wasting processing power. Too low, things will look blurry. V-Sync should definitely be off unless you're getting screen tearing. Frame rate limit, I'd recommend setting usually one above the FPS cap of your monitor. If you have a 60 FPS monitor, set it one up to 120, 144, 160, 165, 180, etc. In my case, I have a 144 hertz monitor. I'll set it up to 160, pretty simple. Then rendering mode, you should definitely have on the middle option. The order has been changed around. Performance will give you much better performance. You may find your PC, if it's newer and more high end, may get better FPS on DirectX 12. However, performance is definitely the best for at least most PCs. Graphics is your preference, so brightness, user interface contrast, colorblind mode, and colorblind strength these are all up to you. And at the very bottom, graphics quality performance mode. You should see that if I set this to DirectX 12, apply and restart my game, these options here should change and you should get some more options. Usually the further to the left or the lower you set things, the better the performance you'll get. If you have a really powerful graphics card, don't be afraid to raise some of the settings to use more of your GPU and take away some stress from your CPU. You may move your bottleneck from one place to another if you push things too far down or too far up. There's a sweet spot for your PC, but on performance mode, most of the things should be set for you. There's only a handful of options here, and that's what I'll be covering. So for me, performance mode and graphics quality performance mode, the 3D resolution should absolutely be set to 100%. If you need to lower your resolution, use this slider instead of the resolution option up here. That way, things won't get too blurry when you lower it to an incompatible resolution. View distance, you should leave it far. Otherwise, you can lower this if you find that it's causing you FPS drops. Now, for the rest of the options here, this really depends on your PC. Usually, you'll crank everything to the left as such for the best possible performance. However, on higher-end GPUs, 
You can raise the texture quality depending on how much VRAM you have with a very little FPS impact. Though it'll definitely be very noticeable while you're playing the game, things will look a lot better with more texture quality. Usually you'll want to have this set at high or medium on higher end graphics cards, but if you set this up to epic, you may need to turn on auto download high resolution textures. But of course, going this far may make your game a little bit more laggy, especially if you don't have the extra VRAM available. So usually high, otherwise on low end PCs, low. The rest of these here you can have off unless you have this texture option set to epic. And finally, meshes. You'll also want to leave this to low. Finally, show FPS under advanced graphics should absolutely be turned on. Rather use the in-game FPS counter than an external overlay as those will cost you FPS. Then we'll apply settings and confirm. Usually you'll need to restart your game at this point to actually see the difference. At this point, you should be getting a really good performance in game. However, if you'd like to try DirectX 12 mode, that's what I'll show you now. So for me, I'll apply settings and I'll need to restart my game. Now, something about DirectX 12 versus performance mode, there is a small community that believes if you use performance mode, you should boot up into DirectX 11 or 12 mode at least once and lower your settings here as they may affect your performance even if the options aren't available to you. Whether you're someone who wants to try that or you're just using DirectX 11 or 12 mode by default or that's what you want to choose, these are the settings you want to set. At the top, all of them are the same as previously mentioned, so full screen, compatible res, vsync off, frame rate one above your monitor, and rendering mode is your choice if you choose not to use performance, which you definitely should if you want performance. Graphics, once again, all your preference here, though I would recommend turning off motion blur, especially if you find yourself getting motion sick. Scrolling down to graphics quality, we have a ton more options now. Usually you'll set the preset down to low and make sure everything's all the way down to the lowest option here. Then at the very bottom, show FPS on, GPU crash debugging off and latency markers off as well. Finally, NVIDIA Reflex low latency. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card, you can turn this on. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card and a really old or bad CPU, you'll want to set this to on plus boost. For me, I'll leave it on. Now for the graphics quality options. I wouldn't recommend using auto set and this option here opens up the website to help you understand settings more, but we'll be skipping over this. Start by setting the preset to low and we'll move down. Anti-aliasing you don't need unless you hate jagged edges. Set this to off. Temporal super resolution is an option you'll get if you turn to TSR low, medium, high or epic. I'm not too sure why there are other options here, but regardless, we have the standard options here of performance, balance, quality, native and custom. Basically, when you choose an option here, say performance, your game will render at 50% of the original resolution and use AI magic to get back to the full resolution. You may notice that further to the left, so performance, you'll get more visual artifacts and weird glitches than if you push this to the right to say quality or even native. If you choose to use TSR, which may help you get a better FPS, I'd recommend setting it to quality. Otherwise, you can mess around with this yourself, lower it to balanced or even performance to get even more FPS out of your PC. Though I'll come back here and test this in just a moment. For now, I'll leave this off. 3D resolution, I'll leave at 100%. Nanite is a new technology to the Unreal Engine. Essentially, it'll load things closer to you in a higher quality. If this is a setting you'd like to mess around with and see what effect it has on your PC, turning this on will enable more options for global illuminations and reflections over here, as you can see. If you turn it on, you'll have both Lumen High and Lumen Epic as options for both of these here, if you choose to mess around with it. Usually, you'll have this off for better performance. Shadows off, unless you like them, in which case set it to medium and no higher. Global illumination and reflections, you can leave off happily. View distance on near. Textures, once again, depends on your VRAM. You can usually raise this for a much better looking game on higher end GPUs with very little to no performance impact. Once again, higher quality textures, which you usually leave off. Effects, low post-processing low, and finally hardware ray tracing. If you'd like to mess around with ray tracing, you'll need Nanite turned on, then reflections set to Lumen High or Lumen Epic. That way you'll get hardware ray tracing here, which will make ray traced reflections and lighting much more accurate. But once again, this is all for looks and it will definitely cost you 
tons and tons of performance. So I'll be leaving these all off. Then advanced graphics. Once again, show FPS on, both of these off, and NVIDIA reflex low latency on, otherwise on plus boost on lower end CPUs. We can apply settings here. And if you choose to stay in DirectX 12 or 11 mode, you can leave your settings as is. Otherwise, if you believe that changing the settings here will affect performance mode, well, change back to performance mode now and apply your changes. So let's quickly test things out. What effect does TSR actually have on the game? Well, I'll restart, hop into creative and mess around with the settings. Then I'll change the game mode to creative at the very top, play. There we go. So in creative and at the top right, you can see I'm setting at 160 FPS, which is really good. This is the lowest settings on DirectX 12 for me on a 3080 Ti. But let's find a place to stand and let's mess around with it. There seems to be a lot going on here. I'll go ahead and unlock my FPS just to see what I'm actually getting. Apply. There we go. A solid maybe 220 FPS. I'll let escape. Options. Settings. Now let's have a look at the options down here for TSR. We need to enable anti-aliasing to TSR, low, medium, high, or epic. Let's start on low on performance. Now you should see my FPS skyrocket. It'll render at 50% of the resolution, scale up using magic. And as you can see, I'm sitting at a solid 230, 40, up to 60, and it's jumping around a little bit. It's definitely an improvement, though very hard to read. If I head back to settings, crank it up to epic, apply, I seem to be getting roughly the same. And you can see small artifacts around the rope over here and the light in the background when I move. There's an odd glow around them, though it's very unnoticeable, especially at high resolutions. So having TSR enabled is really good if you're on DirectX 12 mode. And of course, you have a compatible graphics card. I'd recommend having it enabled on any of the options here. I don't think there's too much of a difference and definitely have it on balanced or quality, otherwise performance. You can go absolutely crazy with this. If I leave it on native, for example, I'm getting 190 FPS, setting it from TSR low to TSR epic, I'm getting 180. Not entirely sure what's changing, but anyways. The cool thing about TSR is that if you decide to crank up your settings, this will absolutely save your butt when it comes to FPS. So for example, I'll crank my settings up to epic and disable anti-aliasing here. Apply. Having a look in game, you can see my FPS is sitting at around 90 or 100. Heading into settings, then setting anti-aliasing to TSR low and temporal super resolution to performance. Let's see what happens. All of a sudden, 110, 120-ish FPS. It's a big improvement. TSR epic. Same difference, not entirely too sure what changed here, but the game looks absolutely amazing, especially shadows. It should be a lot smoother now as well, which is definitely something you'd want, especially if you want to crank your settings up. So I'd absolutely recommend playing around with the setting if you have it available, you're playing DirectX 12 mode, and you like having your graphic settings turned up higher. But regardless, your experiences will probably differ with this. This video's served its purpose for the most part. You now know how to get much better performance out of your PC for free. Once again, in the description down below, you'll find links to Windows 10, 11, and NVIDIA optimization guides to get even more out of your PC. So thank you all for watching. My name's been Technobi here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.